This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Twitch hackers. Uh, I didn't catch that while staying at home as a dad. Uh, hopefully you updated iOS. I did not, but I did update my Plex. All this and more on the Ritual Misery podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 201 for Thursday, the 7th of February, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. And I'm Kit. <laughs> I screwed you up by letting you introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, how you doing tonight? Uh, Much better. Yeah? I've been sick for like the last three weeks and you, I'm like a lot better now. You feel like a human again? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, being sick, has, especially for an extended period of time, just has that. You eventually just, why am I even, why, why am I, why, 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 why? Yeah. Just, just why? Just why? Oh man. Hey, I tell you what, my week has been full of dropping kids off at school and running errands and taking care of the dog and trying to squeeze in a little bit of work every once in a while in the meantime, because this is the first week of me being a stay at home dad. Is this a uh, semi-permanent change? Uh, it is a non-temporary change. Excellent. <laughs> so, so have you put on the military uniform for the last time yet? Um, not yet. I have to put it on two more times. Okay. okay. Um, on the, the 4th of March, I go in just to do some, some out-processing stuff. And then right around the middle of July... I will have to put it on again for the five minute uh, final out processing deployment. Uh, I see. I, I still have one more time to, to wear mine. Oh, yeah? Yeah, probably my funeral. Oh. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not going <laughs> to die. So, I'm just, well, that's I'm, good. I'm just going to live forever in misery. Uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> Ritually, you might say. Yeah, like everything. You know. um, Hey, uh, a couple weeks ago, my Amazon got hacked, and that was fun. And you had a similar thing happen this week for you. Yeah, dude. So last week's Ritual Misery, we we always raid another channel after we're done streaming. Mm -hmm. And I always like, when we do the raid calls, I like adding in the, the little Ritual Misery logo that we have for our Twitch subscribers mm -hmm. over at twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Mm-hmm. And I realized, wait, I, I can't use it because um, I guess I forgot to resubscribe with, with Amazon Prime <laughs> or something. Like, I don't know what's going on here. So after the show ended, I got to investigating a little bit and I realized that I was subscribed to a Russian channel instead. Uh, like Russian as in they're like, like you were talking about speed run, right? Where they're, uh, they're, they're speed running, uh, 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 video games like eight video games and things uh i don't know i couldn't read any of the writing because it was all in like russian like acrylic or whatever it's called mm. uh so you mean you mean like nationality wise russian like russian language russian. oh i see yes russian not rushing ah yes and i was like what difference is this how is this and of course you can't like you know unsubscribe from it you gotta <laughs> let the month expire so i'm like ah oh, damn it so i have to deal with with being subscribed to that for you, another couple you, of weeks were you but, drunk subbing again was i what were you drunk subbing again well okay so <laughs> i noticed that i was also following a bunch of channels that i'd never heard of and i thought could this be some kind of weird, like, did I get drunk or something and like just follow a bunch of channels? I don't know. I went through the list. There was probably about 30 channels that I was following that I'd never heard of before. And they were all Russian. What the hell? So then nice. I went in and changed my password and realized that I had never turned on two factor authentication I had overlooked this when, like, it, probably a year ago now, I went through every, like, everything that I have an account for. Everything that had two-factor authentication, I enabled it. But somehow, <laughs> I overlooked Twitch. And this is particularly entertaining because you, every time you log into the Twitch, the Twitch's second-factor authentication for our Ritual Misery channel 
is on my Google Authenticator. Yes. So every time you go to log in or Sean goes to log in, you guys have to text me for the code in order to get in. It's like this super fast, got to hurry up because you only got like 20 seconds to do it. Yeah. But meanwhile, you forgot to authenticate or two-factor your own account. Yes. <laughs> yes. That just adds another layer of yeah. what the hell. So this is exactly what happened to me. Well, not exactly. My Our, my, our family Amazon account got hacked. And the way we found it was because there were 10 million spam emails in our in our inbox. We're like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Going through there, I found that there are a couple things purchased. Oh, a no. gift card and a, a similar item to something we had just purchased, you know, the bells for the dog for the to letting us know he's got to go potty or whatever. And I immediately knew what was going on, but we were on a fucking plane on the tarmac getting ready to hit take off. So I had to wait like four hours before I could actually do anything about it. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm sitting in my seat trying to change passwords and shit and it's just not working. Finally got all that straightened out. And essentially what the hack is, they, they finagle their way into your account and then they send you a spam email, sign up for every service they can find in order to cloud the fact that they're buying stuff in your account. So you don't notice the Amazon emails until it's too late. We got lucky in that it happened while we happened to be checking our emails and we just started seeing them. We're both looking at the same account going, what the hell is going on here? Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, two factor is now installed on the Amazon account, which now pisses my wife off the same way it pisses you off because now she has to ask me for the code every time she goes to get in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, small annoyances aside, two factor authentication is, hugely important that is a gigantic deterrent mm-hmm. for hackers i'm not saying it's hacker proof oh, but it's, it's yeah it's pretty close like it's it's really good um, it, it keeps so yeah, you from being folks, worth while enable two factor come on mm-hmm. just do it um speaking of like hackers getting into your shit uh you know about this uh this facetime exploit from mm-hmm. uh i don't know i think it came to light a couple weeks ago now um sure yeah that sounds right yeah where basically somebody can call you on facetime and then i they I'm, add they call you and then they add themselves they add themselves to the call yeah as a third party yes yeah, so and then they can hang up mm-hmm. but the call is still active and they can hear everything going on on both sides correct yeah yeah well apple patched that so um, yeah. yep update ios like right now, do and, it. Unfortunately, they patched it with a patch that, by all accounts, at least in the developer version, was killing batteries, like draining batteries very quickly. Yeah, I heard that too, but I, I don't know. I, uh, I've decided I'd, I'd to go the get, other. You know, Thirty less minutes of battery life and uh, not have my life exploited. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm fine with it either way because I've never used a multi-person FaceTime call. Uh, not to mention that it's not enabled for you until you do the patch. So I'll wait to make sure that the people have uh, adequately summarized the battery hit before I upgrade to the new mm-hmm. patch because I, I don't, there's no new features other than being able to multi-party FaceTime and I just don't. Mm. I barely FaceTime with people now. That's, well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true too. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of security patches. If you're going to patch a hole on something like, yeah, I'm, I'm putting it on there. Yeah. There's also a recent thing where uh, companies are able to record the screen of your phone while you're using their app, and then they actually get that information. And I didn't really, I didn't dig too far into it, so I'm not going to try to, you know, be an expert with this. But creepy shit going on, man. Like if if you thought your phone was private, let me tell you, privacy is a lie. Period. Dot. Yeah. End of story. I mean, especially with technology like this, that you walk around, you walk around with a listening device and a transmitting device at all times. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, like, come on. <laughs> it's only, yeah, it's, it's not really private. It's not really safe. It's, it's really degrees of safety and degrees of privacy. Yeah. Um, it's, speaking of, uh, of things that are watching and watchable, I upgraded my Plex this week by picking up an HD home run Quattro. It is a digital TV tuner that goes from the 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 antenna we have installed into um, the the LAN, the network, and then the Plex system actually acts as a DVR with the storage limitation of whatever the storage limitation is on the device you have Plex installed on. 
So in my case, I have it installed on a 21 terabyte NAS. So I can pretty much record every show ever for like the next 30 days at least. <clears throat> and nice. I mean, we're lucky enough we actually get HD channels. We watch the Super Bowl in HD because the antenna that we have, we're 30 miles away from the towers, but it's kind of a clear shot. So we're good to go there. And we already had the antenna. So buying the Quattro is $149 at Best Buy, I think. It's a little cheaper on Amazon. And of course, we'll have an affiliate link in the show notes. But it works really good. I got the four the four um, uh, tuner version because the two, turner, two tuner version was uh, barely any cheaper. And well, if you're recording two shows and a third one starts and you have a little overrun, then you're just screwed. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, we don't watch four shows at a time, but it's better <laughs> to have it set up than to not. Sure. Um, so far, my initial review, uh, video quality is great when you're watching it on a PC, although I have not been able to get it to work live streaming on my iPad or my iPhone. Um, and the recordings themselves are in crystal clear HD. Uh, it's not compressed in any way, so their files are huge. However, if, if you're just watching, if you're just doing it for time delay, then there's no issue. It's not like we're keeping the shows forever. They're just, mm-hmm. you know, trying to time delay the masked uh, singer so my kids can watch that instead of buying that shit. And uh, I mean, it works pretty good for that. So on the Apple TV and the PC, it works fine. I haven't gotten it to work on the mobile devices yet, but uh, supposedly you should be able to. And uh, I have yet to, I've, I've got another 28 days to take it back and return it to Best Buy. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. That's Excellent. Far, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't appear to be that expensive either. So it's, yeah, like I said, it's one fifty. I think it's a little cheaper on Amazon, like I said, but um, we'll we'll throw an affiliate link in there. And um, I'm giving it a cautious thumbs up at this time because you know I have a binary system: thumbs up, thumbs down. So I'm giving it a cautious thumbs up at this time. I'm because I haven't fully finished the review of it, but that's where I'm at with it. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I went to a movie this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, so little 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 story. Um, Steph and I were going to go to a movie. We we're going to have a little like a little date night, Friday night. Okay. So we we went out, got some got some food, mm-hmm. and uh, drove over to the movie theater. Okay. We had about uh, I don't know forty five minutes or something before the movie started. Right next to the movie theater, our bowling alley opened. Mm-hmm. Finally. This is like you in have a bowling Alcordo, alley. Mexico. This is a long awaited event. This this did, is like years in the making. Did they have the big spotlights point. shining up in the sky and everything? Like, no, no. Did I did I mention this is Alamogordo, New Mexico? <laughs> they can't they import spotlights. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have those. We don't even have street lights that work. So <laughs> I mean Wow. Uh, so we were like, you know what? It's it's right here. Let's uh let's just go check it out. So we walked over there, and this place is amazing. It's not just a bowling alley. It's like a full-up entertainment fun center with a bar, like a fully stocked bar. With wait, like wait, wait, wait. So you mean your grocery store now has competition? Yes. The grocery <laughs> store now competes with the bowling alley. <laughs> for the best the bar. Laser tag, the laser tag fun center <laughs> for, the, for the drunks. So we <sighs> went in there, and we're like, holy shit, like – a space just opened at the bar. Let's go have a beer. You know, we got like 45 minutes before the movie. Mm-hmm. We, we ordered one of the, like, I swear there's like 15 taps. Uh, and uh, we're like, all right, this is, this is pretty cool. So we ordered a beer and then we saw like people we knew and we were like meeting other people and like, holy shit. Like this is an actual gathering place in our hometown. <laughs> and uh, we were having so much fun. We were like, you know what? We can see the movie tomorrow. Right. <laughs> so we, we ended up staying there for a few hours. We had Lucas come and get us from the place. <laughs> you uh, you kid Ubered on to home, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so it was That's it was awesome. a good time. But anyway, so the the next day we went and watched the movie we had intended to watch, which was Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. And first of all, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh. Let's. So you said a cautious thumbs up for your for the uh, mm-hmm. for the streaming device. Yes, I'm giving this a very confident thumbs up. Mm. Uh, what a great movie, man! Yeah. I've heard it was pretty good. It is so so good. It's animated, right? This is the animated one. Yes. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Is it computer and- animated or cell animated or hand drawn? 
I'm 99% sure that it's computer animated, but it's made to look hand drawn. It, it's made to look like a comic book. Nice. So like, you know, when, you know, when you, when you read a comic book or at least the way that they used to be done, when you would look at, at someone's face, for example, it wasn't a solid color or even like shades of color. It was like, like pixelated almost mm-hmm. the way that it was printed. That's how the images appeared on, on the screen. You, you, you can like, almost call it like pencilated because the penciler would actually draw the shading in before the color came in. Sure. Sure. Is well, that, they, they, ink, so yeah, you well, have yeah. the pencils, which is, which is like the original drawing and then the inker would come in and shade and then the, the colorist would come right. in and, and colorize it. And that's, is that what you're referring to? Or are you talking about actually pixelated where it looks chunky and blocky? Oh, no, 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 okay. not, not, not pixelated. Yeah. I, di- I didn't really mean pixelated, but the, it's, so if you look at a comic, like, just find an old comic book and you'll mm-hmm. see the like uh it's like circles of color basically that okay are, so you are actually talking pixelated got it no i'm with you now like it, it almost looks like a like an old-timey print texture yeah 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 which i i guess some people found that distracting when they watched the movie um i i didn't at all like i was instantly <laughs> in love because i grew up loving comic yeah. books now my question would be like if 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 an object moved did the pixelation move underneath it or with it Oh, it moved with it, so it, it wasn't distracting like that. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say that'd be distraction if, distracting if you just have a field of pixelation and then oh, the image no. overlaid on top of it. So as the image moves across the screen, the pixelation stays and the image moves. That that would be like, yeah, that would be awful. But no, 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 no. It moved with the drawings, and it was, I don't know. But so artistically, it was. I I loved the style because mm-hmm. it was very much like a comic book. It was a comic book brought to life. Uh, the story was fantastic. Mm. All of the the voice acting was great. The like it was just it was wonderful. I encourage people if you haven't seen it yet, go see it. It's it, it's not going to be in theaters much longer. I was actually afraid that we were going to miss it hmm. uh, because we waited so long to see it. Um, but yeah, like definitely go see it. Uh, if if you don't catch it in theaters, it's probably going to be like out on um, on Blu-ray and DVD fairly soon. Um, yeah, like, yeah, get after it. It's it's a must must see. Nice. <sighs> so the movie draft is over. Yep, we lost. We Moving lost. On. We lost. <laughs> That's just how that goes. But it's yep. still in our show notes, so I had to mention it. Um, yep. Hey, uh, the next thing on on the list, I want to mention is something that I did last night. I sat down and had a. 15, 20 minute interview with Jenny Josephson. She's not been on the show for about a year and a half. And there's been a ton of things that are going on with her. Uh, anyone in Diamond Club should know who Jenny Josephson is. She's just an amazing individual. She's working on a, uh, her, her uh, she owns a, a podcast production company now. She just started another new podcast with her dad actually called um, uh, Old This Old Dad or something like that. Mm-hmm. God, I should really know what it is because uh, I'm trying to pimp it right now. And <clears throat> Um, she, she's doing, she's doing great. She's doing amazing things. And I sat down with her and did a 15, 20 minute interview and that will be a patron exclusive. And you will be able to catch that if you're a patron this weekend. I'm, uh, I was trying to edit it before the show and, uh, I didn't have time. So hopefully that'll be out tomorrow. Um, that'll be out about the same time that this episode goes live on the, the feed. But, uh, yeah, if you're not a patron, cruise on over to ritual misery or patreon.com slash ritual misery and sign up at any level and you'll get these uh the little contents that we put out for patron exclusives and uh, i want to also thank our newest patron stephen cogswell uh yeah thank you cogswell for for uh joining our our clan over there at patreon.com slash ritual misery uh for those that don't know this and again if you're a diamond clever how you how this could have escaped you i have no idea uh, but Night Attack released a new album mm-hmm. about, uh, mm, I don't know, a week and a half ago, something like that? Nine days. Nine days ago. And it's called All's Well, a Night Attack album. And it mm. features Cogswell's music. And it's amazing. It's pretty great. Yeah. Yep. I've listened to it a couple of times now. Yep. And uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so. But I, yeah, I encourage everyone to go over to nightattack.tv slash album. And it's got, a, it's got all the links. For whatever, however you you like listening to music, uh, 
it's got all the links. Um, yeah, good stuff. Again, thank you, Cogswell. Um, I, do, I, I also want to point out uh, Very Old Dad. Is very the name Old of Dad. The there we go. Show. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Um, and it's, it's an interesting look back at, at multi-generational families. It's, yeah, I've always enjoyed Jenny's stories about her dad and uh, the show that she used to do. Um, man, now now it's my turn to draw a blank on the name of the show. Uh, uh, geez. Yep. So the other show that she used to do, uh, her <laughs> oh, tell it anyway. Tell it anyway. Uh, so on Tell It Anyway, her dad would come on on occasion and just tell stories. Mm-hmm. And those were my favorite episodes. Uh, Larry Josephson is a wonderful storyteller and he sounds like somebody I could just, you know, sit around a campfire or something like that for just hours on end, just yep. swap stories. So I encourage everyone to check that out. Very old dad. Um, do you have anything else or do we, do I have a stinger to play? Uh, you got a stinger to play. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids? Games. Play with him. I got, I got, I got the little underlined beat there by Big Voice J. I got it. Yeah, we need, we need to record you doing that. That, 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 that could be all of our stingers from here on out. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I do have a game. This week's game is called Branded for Her Pleasure. Ooh. And this is in <laughs> reference to all the Super Bowl commercials from this last weekend, I imagine. Yeah, so we're we're gonna talk about some some Super Bowl commercials here in a little while. Mm-hmm. But I wanted I always like doing a quiz that pertains in some way to our main topic or to our guest or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I started thinking I want to do something with with brands and slogans. What could I do? Well, I started looking at at brand slogans and I realized something. We've known for a long time that that sex sells in advertising. That's the case big time with slogans, product mm. slogans, because I saw one that got me thinking, OK, that was definitely an innuendo. And then as I read through the list of slogans on the page I was looking at, all of them could be twisted to sound very sexual. So I made a quiz where you're going to tell me what brand I'm referring to oh. when I read you the slogan. All right. All right. So let's start Mm -hmm. with this This one's pretty easy. So I'm going to start easy. It's probably going to get a little harder. That's what she said. (laughs) That's the spirit. (laughs) Wonder Bomb says boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm I'm going to read these in a pseudo seductive voice just to add to the fun. (laughs) You said pseudo seductive as in seductive in your mind. Maybe not everybody else's. Right. That's I was gonna because I almost <laughs> said I'm gonna read them seductively and I was like, well, I mean that's kind of subjective. Like it's gonna just be a turnoff for everyone else. <laughs> I'll be over here just getting excited. Yeah, yeah, never, Ken, Ken's gonna be feeling himself. We're all gonna be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Yeah, yeah. If if ever there was a time you needed Steph on the show, now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. So here's the first one. Double your pleasure. Double your fun. Um, double mint gum. Yes, of course. That's, that's Wrigley's double mint gum. That's mm-hmm. been their slogan for uh, many, many decades. And All right. It, and, it's, and it always uh, shows twins, like in bathing suits. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, when I think of those commercials, I always think of the movie Spaceballs because they had the 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 double mint twins on there on on Spaceball One. And uh, anyway, that's what I always think of. All right, so here's your second one: finger licking good Kentucky Fried Chicken. Of course. You're going to have but, to get away from the food to fuck me up on this one. You know but that. There, right? But of course, it's not called Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's now just KFC. Whatever. Yeah, like why do they do that? I don't. It, it was like, KFC in in uh, in in uh, Kuwait as well, and it was Kuwaiti fried camel. <laughs> oh my! Um, <laughs> bro, yeah. Okay. The third one. 
<laughs> the third one. Good to the last drop. Ooh, is that? Oh, okay. So it's definitely coffee. Um, good to the last drop. Is that? I want to say it's Maxwell House. It indeed is I Maxwell. Almost said you ban. <laughs> like, oh my God. Dude, I don't know of a commercial for that brand. I, I don't either, but for some reason, U Band was popping into my head and I had to like force it out of the way to get to Maxwell House. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. Number four. All right. Hello, boys. <laughs> I just feel like I need to fill air. <laughs> Is that is is that it? <laughs> That's it. Oh my god. Oh boys. Um This was an ad campaign that began in nineteen ninety five. So it's not super old, but it's definitely not new. <sighs> began in nineteen ninety five. I wasn't even watching TV in nineteen ninety five. I know. Was, we were in basic trading. Yeah. Like I was I was either chasing tail or getting chased by TIs. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's a car company. Um, uh, hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to say Porsche. Why not? It's an ad campaign from Wonder Bra. Yeah, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, I know. I don't remember these ads at all. <laughs> all right, number five. In 1985, the only thing I cared about was being able to do the little Joey trick and snap my fingers and a bra come off. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I never mastered that. Ah, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number five. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Hmm. This is an old ad campaign. Yeah, I know. I can see it. <laughs> um, Steve, I ate the whole thing. I don't remember. <laughs> Wonder Mom says that's what she said. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be the punchline after each one of these, I think. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with, um, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Uh, we'll go with Burger King. Alka-Seltzer. So I, I almost put another one on here that was also from Alka-Seltzer. It plop, was plop, 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 fizz, plop fizz. fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Yes. <laughs> Because that one would have worked as well. Like, <laughs> I don't know about the plot plop, unless you're into some weird shit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, no kink shaming here. All right. Yeah, no, 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 no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> All right. Number six. Let your fingers do the walking. Oh, the yellow pages. Of course. <laughs> yep. Mm. All right, number seven melts in your mouth, not in your hands. M and M's, of course. But again, this, this, you're gonna have to get away from the food, man. Mmm, <laughs> mm, good. Mmm, -mm, good. Uh, that's um. It's a it's a condiment. It's like Miracle Whip or some shit. Um, <laughs> Satan's jizz, you say? Uh, I will fight to the last drop. There's a difference between Miracle Whip and mayo. I fucking hate mayo. I love <laughs> a little bit of Miracle Whip on my shit. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> the only time mayo is any good is when you're doing suddenly salad because it gets covered up with a bunch of spices so you can't even taste the fucking mayo. Um. Mm, mm. 
good. I can actually see like the the advertisement on uh, on a web page. Like this is not an old one. This is late nineties, early two thousands. Um, I mean, a lot of companies do like to to bring ad campaigns yeah. back. Uh, I, I Coca Cola. This one's almost a century old. This is an ad campaign that began in the 1930s from mm. Campbell's Soup. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I knew it was something tertiary. It wasn't like a direct food. It was like something you would eat with something else. That, how insulting to soup can you be? I mean, soup soup is food? Uh, no. <laughs> no, chowder uh, might, be a, might be a soup, and it's a food. But just soup by itself is rarely enough to even begin to touch my appetite. All right, number nine. Once you pop, you can't stop. Pop secret. Oh, wrong brand? I'm surprised, very surprised, actually, you got this wrong. Once you pop, you can't stop. Oh, God damn it, it's Pringles. Yeah! <laughs> uh, but you don't get the point. So <laughs> shitty. <laughs> All right, and the last one. Reach out and touch someone. Reach out and touch someone. Mm. I know there's a Depeche Mode song, Reach Out and Touch Faith. <laughs> right. <laughs> or was, I, was that Depeche I think, Mode? I'm pretty sure this, this ad campaign uh, is glad that it was successful prior to the Me Too movement. I don't think reach out and touch someone. Be, I don't think that would that would fly today. Uh, reach out and touch someone, isn't that like? Uh, I'm going to say it's one of the big three telecoms. It's like long distance phone calls. So uh, I'm going to go with AT and T. It indeed was AT and T. Right on. I didn't do too bad. Yeah, I mean, sixty um, percent's passing. Barely. Yep. 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 If it's multi degrees, if it's multiple choice, I would have gotten. Uh, would have gotten at least at least a seventy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, good game. Good game. That was fun. So, yeah, we're talking about ads, of course, because Super Bowl ads. Mm -hmm. We had we had a a, a great uh, Super Bowl this this year. No. No, I'm not going to endorse the people that got into the Super Bowl because the the flagrant bullshit that got them there. And I'm not going to endorse the Super Bowl itself because after a year of saying how offense was king, the defense ruled the fucking Super Bowl until the last two drives. And also, by the way, it was boring as shit. <laughs> and it wasn't boring because I'm, I'm all about a good defensive game. I... I don't mind a score of three to zero. Like I love just watching football when it's a good game, but the lack of enthusiasm I had for the teams involved, like I was kind of happy for the Raiders, you know, but I knew they, they are not the Raiders, the Rams, but I knew they didn't really stand too much of a chance because it's fucking Robert Kraft. You know, he's in the Super Bowl again. So of course he's going to win. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it Robert Kraft? I know it's Kraft. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. He's too rich for me to care. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I had fun watching the game, but it was just it was more because I was you know hanging out, having a good time. The game itself, yeah, pretty lackluster. The first quarter was really interesting, and then the announcers ran out of shit to say during a boring game. Yeah, like, like I've <laughs> I've literally said everything that I can say about the game. There's nothing more. <laughs> It was because, you know, the, at first they were kind of once you start getting a, a, a point spread going on, you can really start talking a little bit more strategy. But when it's just zero, zero or zero, three, there's really nothing going on. And when you got to do that for two and a half quarters or three quarters or whatever it was like, there's there, what I mean, they can only say how awesome this defensive lineman is so many times. <laughs> you know, they, they could have used John Madden saying that that, uh, you know, the, the team that scores the most goals ends up winning the game. That's that's actually not a jo bad John Madden. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> that's actually my first attempt ever. We, we, we finally found your calling in life. Um, oh all right, gosh. but the highlight of the, of the show was, well, the highlight of the show was the end. But 
or or at least the your your subjective end. Whenever it was that you cut the TV off, which for me was uh, as as the confetti flew. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the highlight for anything was other than shutting it off was this, the commercials, uh, had some good ones, had some bad ones, had some mediocre ones. Let's start with, um, let's start with the, with the good, because that's the easiest to talk about. Let's talk about the good ones. Kent, what was your favorite one? Uh, so it's hard to pick a favorite because there were some that, that made me laugh, but I didn't think they were necessarily good ads. Um, but but if we're talking specifically about good ads, the ones that made me smile the most for, you know, not for being funny, but just for being like, wow, that's a good commercial were th- there were two commercials for Google. Hmm. And he's, oh, you know, Google, court, you know, whatever, Google, uh, big tech uh, <clears throat> company up in my shit, whatever. Uh, Google has some good products out there and they they highlighted them very, very well in these commercials. One of them, um, for our military listeners out there, if you guys didn't see this commercial, let me let me describe it. Um, you know, when you're getting out of the military and you're like, okay, I'm a I'm a weapons loader. What what am I going to do with that skill? You know, I put bombs on airplanes. What, what I can't, you know, I'm not going to go work for an airline putting bombs on airplanes. Right. What you can do, so I, I am a retired bomb loader. So my AFSC or my Air Force specialty code is 2W1X1. Civilians are like, what the fuck is that, right? right. So like before, if you would Google that, it would come up with like, you know, a military recruitment page or something like that and like nothing else. Um, well, two, oh. two is aircraft, W is weapons, one is the second. Uh, AFSC subspecialty X is your skill level and one is how your skill level breaks down per aircraft airframe or munition system. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So because mine was two alpha six, seven, six, which two aircraft alpha, uh, being maintenance, just general maintenance, six being a specialist, uh, seven being a seven level and a six being an electrician, the type of specialist. So, that's how yeah, it breaks down for seven level for, is equivalent to craftsman in like a trade, right? Like it, there, there's like one a, level your basic trainee, three level you just got out of tech school, five level you kind of know what the hell you're doing, seven level you know enough to stay out of trouble, and nine level you're supposed to know everything, but you clearly don't. Yeah, n- nine <laughs> levels is like a manager level. It's like, uh, anyway, um, you're writing policy with, at with that point, guild, uh, uh, craft level, craftsman levels, or yep. whatever. So Anyway, so now you can type in your AFSC and you could get relevant, uh, like, you know, job equivalency results and things like that. Uh, it was a very, it was definitely a, mil- a commercial for the military. Yep. No one else gave a fuck about that. But I guarantee everyone in the military that saw that was like, oh my God, that's really, really cool. This comes off of something they've been doing where if you're doing a job search, certain websites will actually show up as vet friendly. Um, if, if you tell the, uh, Google that you're a veteran, whether you click on the veterans preferences or whatever. Um, and when you're surfing websites and you're looking for jobs, things like that, it'll actually have vet friendly companies highlighted for you. And this is just the, the next step in that progression. And as you and I both know, going through the transition program for leaving the military, there's a billion and one resources out there, but there's no single way to get to any of them. Uh, no two resources share a common link. They're all just completely separate entities and sites and everything else. And this is part of Google's attempt to kind of combine all that into at least if they can't combine the sites and the resources, make it easier to find them specific to military needs. And this is this is a positive. This is one thing that I went on uh, DTNS and spoke about um, a few months back. And it, it's, it's really a positive thing, especially for people in my position where they're actively retiring. And there's not a lot of, in the civilian world, there's not a lot of civilian help for you. The military world is too convoluted and it's kind of, in it, everything's in its own little bubble, even though it's all part of the overall process. And this mm-hmm. is just Google trying to bridge those bubbles. And it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, I haven't used it yet myself because I have different plans. I've already kind of got my plan set, but I yeah. mean, this would have been helpful for people like you, Kent, that you didn't know what the fuck you were going to do when you got out. You were just kind of like, well, let's see what happens. And luckily you happened into a decent job, but like yep. you, you were far more confused than my plan lays out for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The other Google commercial was for translate. 
and uh, I've I've been a fan of the Google Translate tool, especially their mobile app forever. Like since it's existed, I've yep. used the shit out of it. And their mobile app has gotten just absolutely incredible. Like being able to read signs in real time with your camera. Yep. Uh, absolutely amazing. And they highlighted the fact that uh, not only, you know, how many people use their Translate app, but they highlighted the most commonly translated words and phrases. Mm -hmm. And they, like, by a landslide, were things like, how are you, and thank you, and things like that. Not, not where's the bathroom, or, or, you know, hey you, or anything like that. It was, it was words of kindness. Yeah, it was, with, a, it was an interesting perspective on what's And I, I enjoyed that. That made me, made me happy. Yeah. What about you, man? Um, so the Xbox accessibility one gave me the feels because I knew that the accessibility stuff was something that Microsoft was working on for Xbox where right. um, disabled kids and, and, and adults, I guess, could could be better able to play the games that they have on the system and, and kind of it's it's more of a, hey, this is awesome for those people that have these problems versus a Unity thing to me, but it's still something that I really enjoyed. I, I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, the Kia elevator commercial where they kept going up and like every floor was a slightly perverted idea of whatever they wanted to get. Um, that made me laugh. Uh, was this one with, with Jason Bateman? Yeah. Where he was the, the bellhop or yep. whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was a pretty funny commercial. <laughs> that made me laugh a couple times. This is a long commercial too. It was like a minute long, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it made me laugh and, and I thought that was pretty good. Um, the Is Pepsi okay? Uh, with Steve Carell, that... That junk made me laugh out loud a few times because there's a, a few is like a serious commercial. So there's like three of them, I think. And each time it came on, I laughed again. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I enjoyed the commercial and I really like Steve Carell. So that helped. Uh, but I wasn't really sure. I mean, are they just trying to push a, a new catchphrase or something? Because like, I mean, I get it. You know, people ask for a Coke. Mm hmm. If they don't have Coke, the the waitress or whoever always says, you know, oh, is Pepsi okay? Uh, but trying to push that aspect of, you know, Pepsi's the lesser brand, and I'm, hey, let me point out to you, guess what? We're the second best brand. It, but well, also say that we're. But not but again, think about it. If if you saw this commercial and you go to a, st a restaurant and they're like, hey, uh, and you're like, can I get a Coke? And they're like, is Pepsi okay? What's your first response going to be? It's going to be quoting the commercial. Is Pepsi okay? Pepsi's great, you know, something like that. And it's, I mean, it, it's, they're taking, they're taking the reality of the situation of them being the second place soda or whatever and yeah. turning it into something that can be enjoyed and, and remembered. Yeah. And that's not bad. But yeah, sure, sure. But also when you go to a restaurant, if, if you don't give a shit, if you're having Coke or Pepsi, um, when, when you go to a restaurant, like you don't, no restaurant carries Coke and Pepsi. So you're never right. going to like, Oh, can I get Pepsi instead? Like, it's not a, you're not selling anything by this. Like, like I, I'm drinking the Pepsi anyway. I'm going to j enjoy the experience better, I guess. Yeah. But you're not going to sell any more Pepsis. <laughs> or at least, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not an advertising. Uh, Here's the thing that gets me though, is like uh, Dr. Pepper is my n number one soda to drink besides mm -hmm. Mountain Dew. And Mountain Dew is distributed by different companies depending on where you are in the country. But Dr. Pepper is pretty much cut right down the line. Like if you're, I have to remember here, if it's, if you're west of the Mississippi, it's distributed by Coke. If you're east of the Mississippi, it's distributed by Pepsi or something crazy like that. It's like, cause it's, it. yeah, it's, it's its own, it's its own company that has different deals with different people in different places. So sometimes you go to a place that has Coke and they have Dr. Pepper, or you go to a place that has Pepsi and they have Dr. Pepper or they won't, you know, like is like, yeah, damn or, it. well, but I mean, there's Mr. Pib too. Right. Which is a Coke product. Right. So <laughs> how would, why would Coke distribute Dr. Pepper if they have Mr. Pib? The same time, the same reason sometimes you can get Coke and Mountain Dew, even though Mountain Dew has, or Coke has Mellow Yellow. Mm. Yeah. I need, a, uh, I, I need like real world examples. So your homework assignment <laughs> for is bring me examples of where that, what, what restaurants serve Coke and Mountain Dew. <laughs> I've seen it several times. Um, hey, uh, my my number one commercial though is going to be the uh, oil 
Olay commercial, um, Oil of Olay, where okay. the killer skin with the, uh, 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 not Sarah Jessica Parker, what the hell's her name? Oh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Yeah, right. Sarah Michelle Geller is running through a house and the, the killer's trying to get her or whatever and she can't unlock her phone. Uh, because the FaceTime or the Face Unlock isn't working, I was like, "Oh man, this is gonna be a Samsung commercial." At, no, at first, well, I thought I, it was a trailer for a movie, and then I thought it was gonna be a Samsung commercial about how bad Face ID Face ID is. And then it turns out that it can't recognize her face because she's been using oil of LA, and her face is like rejuvenated and shit. And I thought that was such a great twist. The little it was corny at the end where the killer's like, "Oh yeah, you could be a movie star," you know. That was corny, is over the top, whatever. But that yeah. twist that I didn't know what the commercial was for until the very end. I thought that was pretty entertaining. That was my favorite one. Okay. Well, yeah, I didn't like that commercial. I think it, I, I think, like you said, the end of that commercial kind of just left me with the oh, well, fuck this commercial. <laughs> I don't know. I think if they left off that that ending part where the killer was just like you know part of the group or whatever. Yeah, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Worst worst commercial. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I mean, there's a lot to choose from. There were some there were some duds. So we're gonna agree on part of this. So we'll start with that. Um, all the robot commercials, Michelob Ultra, TurboTax, there are a few others basically saying robots are um, emotionless and pitiful and basically like second class capable things. It, it, it struck me as odd. It seemed like um, it seemed like a whole lot of people wanted to push the same message with all the robots being, you know, and then you quoted the TurboTax robot child one. And that was kind of like that capped it off for me. That was like, okay, I'm done with these robots not having emotions and being able to do human things. I'm done with this. It's, it just, it, it just turned me the wrong way. Yeah. Like I, not the, that I'm the, a robot sympathizer. I, I, I don't care. Like I know they're not things. They're, they're not people. They're things. It right, just, right. <laughs> but, the, but the, the TurboTax robot, like child was just, it was fucking creepy. And it was just, it was disturbing yeah. because it's an emotionless robot, yet it's pleading with its master or dad, I think. Right. It's calling it dad. Like, you know, I want to be this and I don't have emotion. Like it's being a sad robot, sad because it doesn't have emotions. Like what is happening right now? Yeah. It was like a bad, like a, like a Black Mirror parody or something. I just, I, I wasn't. <laughs> pleased with it at all <laughs> right just, exactly ugh. yeah um so I'm using turbo tax this year uh then then i'm going to go with um the asmr with zoe kravitz it yeah. was from the very beginning until the very end it was cringeworthy it was not a good example of asmr and at least twice she popped like she she went over it was it was just not good. I hated it, and I had to. I had to explain to my family what the hell ASMR was, and, <laughs> and that just made it even worse. Because then I look like a creeper because I know what it is, and my son David is just sitting there being quiet because he obviously knows what it is. I don't. I'm not. I'm not really into ASMR to begin with. I think it's a little weird, but again, no king shaming. It's just not for me. See, but then, and this is the thing. Hold on. Hold on. King shaming. Like, I feel like you're kink shaming it by referring to kink shaming with this ASMR. I don't understand these people that, that it's a sexual thing. I don't understand that ASMR to me. I, like I've known about ASMR for like probably a decade or more. And it was never associated with sex in any way whatsoever until like, I don't know, a year or two ago when like all these Twitch streamers and YouTubers and shit started doing it. Hmm. And then suddenly like, I mean, it falls prey to the, you know, it, streamer, it, you know, if you're if you're an attractive looking girl and you want to like bump your numbers up, then you make yourself look sexy or whatever. Do sexy things, right? So if you're an ASMR streamer and you want to bump your numbers up because you've only got seven viewers or whatever, start being sexy, right? I, I guarantee your numbers will go up for for you know for right or wrong, whatever. But that's just a fact of how it works. Now ASMR is looked at, especially by people that that haven't, you know, listened to it or watched ASMR or, or learned about it or whatever. It's now become this like sex thing, and that's why. So I'm like David. Like I would have been like David, 
pretending like I didn't know what the fuck it was or not. Not I wouldn't lie that about not knowing what it was, but I would just keep my mouth shut because I, I didn't want to be the guy that's like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about ASMR when everybody's already got in their head that, oh, this is like this is a sex thing. Like this is it's, it's, it's like light porn or something. It, it's like furries. Everybody thinks furries are immediately sex things and they're not. It's That's a particular subculture of it. That's that makes perfect sense to me. I, I'm probably one of those people that, that, um, I, when, when someone talks about furries, I automatically think the sexual fetish. Right. And so did I until I found out my daughter was a furry. Oh, <laughs> well, all right then. It forces you to learn all that you can about it. And then you find out that it's, uh, the, the sex aspect is, is a very small, minor, um, uh, sub subculture of it. Interesting. So yeah. that's a that's a one for one analogy then. Yeah. With ASMR. Yeah. Interesting. Exactly. Um, all right. How about the ones we were uh, we kind of eh, take it or leave it or they had some good points. So <laughs> Bud Light always has good advertising. Mm. I think their beer is trash. Their product <laughs> is awful. So- but. <laughs> Outside of Geico, because Geico is is hands down the champion advertiser in my book. Mm. But be after after Geico, like Bud Light is the best commercial, and that's been the case for decades now. Like they have had the best commercials, not just in the Super Bowl, but also definitely in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Their commercials usually stand out. Um, they're funny. They're clever. Um, yeah. So a theme that they've had for a while now. Uh, well, two of them, actually the, the bud night, the, uh, dilly dilly. They combined those. And, uh, so they've got a, 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 you know, the bud night is about to enter a joust and, you know, it seems like, you know, your standard bud light fair. And then the bud night gets knocked off his horse and suddenly it's not a bud light commercial anymore. Right. Like this weird transition into a Game of Thrones commercial. Yeah. So the night that knocked him off his horse happened to be the, the mountain. Uh, not Sandor. Sandor's the hound. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Sandor's the older brother. <laughs> the mountain. <laughs> um yeah, and then dragons came in and in, in, in Franken Mountain at, at uh to be more specific, it was Franken Mountain. Franken Mountain, yes. Uh slight spoiler for folks that aren't caught up on Game of Thrones, perhaps. Uh but yeah, then the dragons came in and, and destroyed not just the Bud Knight, but like all the dilly dillies and all I, the like everybody's dead now. I <laughs> didn't I didn't I didn't get it. I was just happy to see anything Game of Thrones on the TV. Yes. And yes. I hate Bud Light. I didn't like the dilly dilly shit. Um <laughs> I thought the commercials where they were trucking around the corn syrup was pretty funny. I thought that was that was pretty funny. Um but even that's misleading, so I didn't care for that too much. You know, I I yeah, I have, it was Yep. I've got thoughts on the corn thing. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. They don't, well, they don't, they don't use corn syrup, and then use like uh, some other kind of sweetener that's basically the same shit. So it's like whatever. Yeah, so they they don't use corn, but they use rice. Right. Nobody <laughs> uses rice in beer. Well, they Except had to justify it somehow. Fucking mass produced fucking beers like Bud Light. Or you got to fucking get a dead in the fucking taste of it somehow. <laughs> So you throw rice in it as an adjunct. A craft beer would never use rice or right. corn for that matter. But, oh, my God. So, that, yeah. Oh, you other beer brands suck because you use corn. Ha ha. We're not going to tell you we use rice, though, because we're just as bad. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. But the, the, the corn commercials were pretty funny though <laughs> but the message was fucking stupid right and, exactly and that's why it's on this list of and, of mix up yeah and also they pissed off the corn lobby <laughs> like for real <laughs> the corn lobby went after ab and bev for these co- these commercials because their bud light is the number one selling beer on earth well that might not be the case it's definitely the number one selling beer in america but i think there might be a chinese beer that's the number one in the world uh right. but that anyway doesn't matter it's the, definitely the the uh most uh, visible 
brand for beer. And they came out and said, corn fucking sucks. <laughs> Don't drink anything with corn. So, of course, the corn lobby, which is a massive, massive agricultural lobby. Uh, yeah, they were not happy. Yeah. They lost money because of those Super Bowl commercials, guaranteed. <laughs> Even if it's just like, you know, a pocket of people here and there that that switch from Miller Lite to Bud Light because they, you know, don't like corn syrup suddenly. Right. Um, that's going to that's gonna impact corn. That's the other thing that gets me about this is the fight right now isn't really over corn syrup. It's high fructose corn syrup, which is not the same thing. Right. You know, but I mean, they're both corn derivatives, though. So in, uh, yes, but hey, well, but the but the corn syrup that they're using in the beers is not high fructose, right? And that, and that's what that's what gets me is the the fight is against high fructose corn syrup. That's where the bad shit is, right? So you're well, just saying corn syrup. Well, that's it's almost like a different. Your body treats it completely differently, so it's not even, you know. But they're still saying it, and it's just like the, the whole me, the messaging was just shot to yeah. me. A great execution for a very shitty message. Yep, exactly. So. Um, the other one that I had on here for the, 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 the good or bad, um, the Alexa items that didn't make the cut. I thought these were pretty funny for the most part. The hot tub one was kind of shit, but Harrison Ford and his dog with his dog ordering like pallets and pallets of food with the Alexa yeah. color. I laughed out loud. I thought it was funny. I think they bought too many, too many spots. I, um, so I, was confused by this because I so I don't have a, a device I don't have a um, uh, uh, Amazon Echo right or Echo Dot or any of those things. I, in fact, I don't have you know I don't have Google Home. I don't have like any of the or HomePod or whatever it's called. I don't have any of the the boxes that sit in a room that I talk to. Like right. I don't like I don't like that. First, it's just I don't know. It's just not something that I would use like <laughs> literally ever. <laughs> So it's just adding yet one more surveillance device into my house. Um, but this is – even if I didn't have like the, the, you know, the creep out factor and the you know, I don't think I would actually use this factor, the idea that I could accidentally order a bunch of shit on Amazon makes me definitely not want that. <laughs> so I don't know what they were trying to say with this commercial because they, if they were trying to convince me to get an Amazon Echo – they did the exact opposite. Well, they they came out this last year. Uh, we covered it at IQMZ uh, Tech, where they were basically announcing uh, Amazon in uh, uh, Amazon voice services and everything, including a microwave, a clock, um, right. several different yeah. versions of the Dot and the Alexa, um, all these different things. But the laughter about oh, what are you going to put in put in Alexa next? Or are you going to put it in a toilet seat? Or are you going to put it in this? You going to put it in that? So it was kind of a joke that they came, kind of came back against, which is fine. I mean, that's that's their prerogative to do it. And it, uh, in my opinion, it worked out. I thought it was pretty funny. Again, I just thought there were too many of them. But the one with the dog, the, you know, the, the universal translator with the dog, and the yep. fact that that commercial came on not long after the Google Translate one came on was very well placed, and I thought thoroughly enjoyed watching Harrison Ford yelling <laughs> yelling at his dog about how he wouldn't I, I don't care what you say I'm not buying I'm not paying for any more dog food and the dog starts ordering gravy and I was like ah yeah that's that's yeah. what my dog would do but, yeah it was incredibly entertaining it was funny it was great seeing Harrison Ford in that role it was great it was it was great mm -hmm. I you know again this is why it's on my mix or why it would be on my mix list is like I don't know what they were selling because uh Definitely weren't selling me an, an Amazon Echo. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> oh, yeah. My gosh. Oh well. Overall, commercials were once again the best part of the Super Bowl. Yep, and For that's sure. usually There's how it is. Like like last year, the, the ads were kind of sucky, but the game was really good. This year, the game was really sucky, but the ads were pretty good. So maybe maybe we're just at a zero sum game. Like you're gonna you're gonna end up with an even keel regardless. And personally, I'd rather have great game than a great ad. Yeah, and well, and the the other thing that people look at is the halftime show, and it was complete trash this year. I. Yep. <laughs> and again, I don't really have anything to say about it. I, I've said my piece. It was shit. Anyway, I'm not. I, oh yeah. gosh. All right, man. Um, that's about it for for the show tonight. Yeah, dude. Um, if people want to see more of my opinions about things, I'm on Twitter, RM underscore Del Noche. 
Yeah. Um, um, I mean, pretty much everywhere, either with that name or Del Noche or Del Noche 77 or eh, that's probably about it. Some derivative thereof. Yeah. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. And you can find the show at Ritual Misery, R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y. Um, Which uh, Flavor Toothpaste will remind us how to spell that it, at the this episode. Exactly. Um, and submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com, and you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. <laughs> thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Um, thank you for listening. For you, for me, for Kent, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. <laughs> See ya! <laughs>